On January 5th, 1870, Don Bosco had a dream that contained a prophecy that's probably the most incredible event in his life. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Don Bosco was an advocate for papal infallibility, so he resolved to go to Rome in support of this dogma. His heart and mind were with the First Vatican Council. Papal infallibility in matters of faith and morals, when he teaches ex cathedra, was teaching as ancient and universal as the church itself. The entreaties of many bishops and the desire of Christendom demanded that the council define this truth as a dogma. Don Bosco had always held this prerogative of the Roman pontiff in singular esteem. He rejoiced in these manifestations of faith as he became more and more persuaded of the need to define this dogma. But the unbelievers and the Freemasons were consumed by exasperation and uneasiness. Seeing that the church remained so full of life despite so many persecutions, these forces convened in an anti-Catholic council in Naples in the name of free thought. They aimed to wage an all-out war against the Pope and the papacy. In Bologna, Giusuè Carducci printed a hymn to Satan as the whole Protestant, schismatic, sectarian, and Masonic world boiled with anti-Christian passions. Those in the Masonic lodges used every possible means to sow discord between the church hierarchy and Catholic societies, and their efforts partly succeeded. Don Bosco became aware of this and was most grieved when he learned that several bishops had declared themselves opposed to the pertinence of defining papal infallibility as dogma. For his part, Don Bosco joined other bishops, prelates, and theologians in warmly supporting this opportunity to define this dogma. They hinted that the definition would end the errors of Gallicanism, a widespread belief in France that sought to make the French church independent from Rome and subordinate to French civil authority, an egregious error of the Renaissance. They also hoped that reasserting papal infallibility would end Febronianism in Germany, where believers wanted to nationalize Catholicism by shifting power from the papacy to local bishops. Febronianism was a powerful movement within the Catholic Church in Germany in the latter part of the 18th century. It attempted to nationalize Catholicism and restrict the power of the papacy in favor of the episcopate. Don Bosco felt great relief when he learned that on December 25, 1869, the Archbishop of Malin proposed to define papal infallibility as a dogma. From that moment, the proposal became the essential theme of the Council. Then, on January 5, 1870, Don Bosco had a dream and wrote down what he saw and the voice of God he heard speaking. He wrote, God alone is almighty. He knows everything and sees everything. God has neither past nor future. To him, everything is present. He alone, in his infinite mercy and by his glory, can manifest future things to humanity. On the eve of the Epiphany of 1870, all the material objects in my room disappeared, and I found myself among supernatural things. It was a brief moment, although I was sensibly present, I had great difficulty communicating what I saw using external and sensible signs. I heard, from the south comes war, and from the north comes peace. The laws of France no longer recognize the Creator, and the Creator will make himself known and visit France three times with the wrath of his fury. On the first visit, he will strike down her pride with defeats, plundering, and slaughtering crops, animals, and people. On the second visit, the great harlot of Babylon, France, which good men sigh and call the brothel of Europe, shall be deprived of her head in disorder. Paris, Paris, instead of arming yourself with the name of the Lord, you surround yourself with houses of immorality. They shall be destroyed by yourself. Your idol, the Pantheon, shall be incinerated so that it may come to pass that iniquity has lied to itself. Your enemies shall put you in distress, hunger, fear, and the abomination of the nations. But woe to you if you do not recognize the hand that beats you. I want to punish immorality, abandonment, contempt of my law, says the Lord. 
On the third visit, you shall fall into foreign hands. From afar, your enemies shall see your palaces in flames. Your houses will become a heap of ruins, wet with the blood of your valiant ones who are no more. But behold, a great warrior from the north carried a banner in his right hand inscribed with these words, Irresistible is the hand of the Lord. At that instant, the venerable old man of Rome went to meet him, waving a fiery torch. Then the banner expanded and became white as snow. The name of He Who Can Do All Things was written in the middle of the banner in golden letters. The warrior bowed deeply to the old man, and they shook hands. Now the voice of heaven spoke to the shepherd of shepherds. You are in the great conference with your assessors, but the enemy of goodness does not stand still a moment. He studies and practices all arts against you. He shall sow discord among your assessors. He shall stir up enemies among my children. The powers of the age shall vomit fire, if only the words could choke the throats of the keepers of my law. This will not be. They will hurt themselves. You must hurry. If you do not overcome the difficulties, sever them. If you are distressed, do not stop, but continue until the head of the hydra of error is truncated. This blow will shake the earth and hell, but the world will be saved, and all who are good will rejoice. Gather around you, therefore, even two assessors, but wherever you go, continue and finish the work that was entrusted to you. The days run fast, your years advance to the appointed number, but the great queen will always be your help. As in times past, in the future, she will always be magnum et singular in ecclesia presidium, the powerful, prodigious defense of the church. The voice of heaven continued, but you, Italy, land of blessings, who has plunged you into desolation? Not your enemies, but your friends. Don't you hate that your children ask for the bread of faith and find none to break it for them? What shall I do? I will strike the shepherds and scatter the flock so that those sitting on the chair of Moses may seek good pastures while the flock meekly listens and feeds. But my hand will hover over the flock and the shepherds. Famine, plague, and war will cause mothers to mourn the blood of sons and husbands who have died in enemy lands. And for you, O Rome, what shall it be? Ungrateful Rome, effeminate Rome, haughty Rome. You have come to the point where you only seek and admire nothing but luxury in your independence, forgetting that your glory rests on Golgotha. Now the venerable old man of Rome is old, frail, and defenseless, yet his word makes the whole world tremble. The voice of heaven said, Rome, I will come four times to you. On the first visit, I will smite your lands and their inhabitants. On the second visit, I will bring slaughter and extermination to your walls. Have you not yet opened your eyes? On the third visit, I will break down the defenses and defenders. I will rain down terror, fright, and desolation at the Father's command. My wise men will flee, but my law will still be trampled so that I will make the fourth visitation. Woe to you if you still take my law in vain. There will be deceptions between the learned and the ignorant. Your blood and your children's blood shall wash away the stains you have caused to the law of your God. War, plague, and famine are the scourges with which the pride and malice of humanity shall be beaten. Where are your magnificent mansions and palaces? They have become the garbage of the squares and streets. But you, O oh priests, why do you not run and weep between the vestibule and the altar, praying for the end of the scourges? Why do you not take the shield of faith and go on the rooftops, into the houses, the streets, the squares, every place, even those inaccessible, to bring the seed of my word? Are you unaware that this terrible two-edged sword cuts down my enemies and breaks the wrath of God and man? These things must come relentlessly, one after another. 
things happen too slowly. But the august Queen of Heaven is present, and the power of the Lord is in her hands. She scatters her enemies like mist. She clothes the venerable old man of Rome in all his ancient garments. A violent hurricane will come again. Iniquity is at an end. Sin will cease. And before two full moons in the month of flowers passes, the rainbow of peace will appear on earth. The great minister will see the bride of his king dressed in festive garb. The entire world shall see a sun brighter than the flames that appeared in the upper room on Pentecost. Nor shall it be seen again until the last of days. Thus ended the message from God. Don Bosco made a copy of this reflection and took it to Rome. As he explained to those who questioned him, the dream concerned the war between France and Prussia happening just then, as well as the condition of the church and the desolation that hung over Italy. Don Bosco had another copy sent to a prelate in Rome. An 1872 issue of the journal La Civiltà Cattolica mentions the aforesaid prophecy. It reports some of it verbatim, preceded by an authoritative testimony. We recall a most recent prediction, never printed and unknown to the public, which someone from northern Italy communicated to a personage in Rome on February 12, 1870. We do not know from whom it came, but we can certify that we had it in our hands before Paris was bombed by allied Prussian forces and set on fire by communists. And we will say that it gave us wonder to see that it predicted the fall of Rome as well when such an event was not judged to be imminent nor probable. According to Don Bosco, these events appeared likely to occur around 1874 if new iniquities did not emerge to oppose the divine will. Later, when he was questioned about the fulfillment of his dream, Don Bosco answered that perhaps these events would not occur again because the Lord, in his mercy, sometimes likes to hint at which path mankind might take in this or that circumstance to get out of some difficulty and nothing more. Thank you for listening to probably the most incredible prophecy from St. John Bosco's life. And if you enjoy these videos, why not consider becoming a monthly promoter of St. John Bosco? It would really help us out a lot. God bless you and Our Lady keep you. Let's go. To further study the fulfillment of St. John Bosco's prophecy, research the Siege of Paris and the Capture of Rome during the Franco-Prussian War, 1870 to 1871.